Hey guys, we're going to go ahead and do this through YouTube. I'm sorry, I don't really have anything to put my phone up on, so hopefully this won't shake too much. So this is lesson 10.1 about, um, we're going to be talking about conic sections. So this is a little different way to think about some of the things we already have knowledge on, such as parabolas, ellipses, and circles, and then we have this new thing, hyperbolas, and actually we haven't done ellipses yet either too much. But um, the first thing we're going to talk about is parabolas, and this is going to be kind of a new way to see it represented. So um, kind of, I don't want to say forget everything you learned before, but for this particular section it's quite a bit different. So we're going to talk about a parabola as a... Um, as defined, we're going to talk about two things with it. We're going to talk about the directrix and the focus. So the uh, focus is this little point here. It's going to always be on the inside of the parabola. Hopefully you can see my mouse there. Sorry, I know this is not necessarily the clearest. And then the directrix is this line equidistant from the vertex, the same distance as the focus is from the vertex. So you're going to see in the next slide, that how it's defined is this thing called P. So here's kind of our standard equation of a parabola now. And we're actually going to talk about vertically symmetric parabolas. So they're going to be symmetric with respect to the vertical axis. And then we're also going to talk about horizontal that are um, ref uh, um, symmetric about the horizontal axis. So this is kind of the parabola we already knew, x squared equals 4py, so instead of y equals something x squared, we have x squared by itself, and then this 4py. So you'll see how this works when we work some equations, but p is representing that distance that the focus falls on the axis of symmetry from the vertex, and then negative p would be the distance where the directrix, or that line beneath the vertex, or above if, it, if p happens to be negative, is going to fall. So you'll see how this works here as we do some equations. The same thing for the ones that are symmetric about the horizontal axis. Now it's just y squared equals 4px. And your focus, I forgot to say in the last slide too, so when it's symmetric about the y-axis, it would be 0p. Now that it's symmetric about the x-axis, it's p0. And you can see where that point is in the picture, p distance from the vertex. So looking at some parabola or some problems, how would we do it? The first thing we would do is take the equation, solve it over into the correct format. So obviously the first one is how you had seen it before, but now we're going to get x squared by itself. So we multiply by negative 12. We factor out 4, so you're always going to factor out 4 because then whatever is left with y is going to be your p-value. So our p-value is negative 3. So we already know it's going to be an upside-down parabola, and we know that the focus is going to be 3 away from the actual vertex. So here is our... Um, Here's our focus, so we know it's symmetric about y, so we know it's going to fall on y. Our vertex will be at 0, 0, so our focus is down at negative 3. Our directrix is up at positive 3, and then we draw our parabola. So I'm not going to be worried whatsoever about how much they open or how little they open. Technically speaking, the further the focus is, picture like a stretch effect, so the further that focus is from the parabola, the narrower it should be, or the closer it is to the vertex, the, the wider it should be. But don't worry too much about that. I just want to see that your focus and directrix are in the right place. So here we're going to kind of work backwards. We have a focus of 5, 0, a vertex of 0, 0. So what are we going to do? That tells us that the focus, because it's the x value is 5, we know that once again it is going to, or actually no, this will be the opposite. So if the, if the vertex value, sorry, I'm trying to talk fast before the kids start making noise. If the x value of the focus, or, or the p value is shown in the x value on the focus, that means we're going to be symmetric with respect to the x axis. So we have a p value of 5, and that means this is going to be an equation that is symmetric about the x axis. So now it's going to be the form 4px y squared. 
So we we um, kind of plug that 5 right in there, and out comes y squared equals 20x. Adira. Sorry, that's my dog. So then um, we have the concept, what happens if the vertex is not at... Zero, zero. So that's when we get this guy. So remember the concept of your H and K when we talked about the vertex before when we had worked with parabolas. This is kind of the same deal. So um, your H will always be with X and it represents the X value of the vertex and your K will always be with Y. So again, we just have to maintain this standard form. So if our parabola is symmetric with respect to the vertical, then your P value would just be added to the K value of the vertex, but your H value would remain the same. Your directrix would just be the line Y equals K, whatever that vertex value is, minus P. So it's going to fall below wherever that y vertex value is, that distance, whatever p is. If we're symmetric with respect to the horizontal, we have the same thing. Notice how the k and the h followed, so now k is still with y, h is still with x, but it's kind of switched. But now our focus would be represented by h plus p, and k remains the same because it's falling on that same axis of symmetry. Think of the axis of symmetry like the value y equals k. That's unchanging. k, and then your directrix would be the line x equal, equal, equals h minus p. So let's look at a problem. We're going to have to complete the square. So first we want to take y to the other side because we want to set it up in the right format anyway. Subtract the 5 over because we want to isolate all the x terms if you remember how to complete the square. So remember, you're going to take that term. You have x squared plus 6x plus something. So the something is going to be that middle term, 6x. We're going to divide this by 2, which gives us 3. And then we square it, which gives us 9. So that's the special formula because it could creates the perfect square on the left. We add that 9 to the right as well. And now we get x plus 3 squared. We have negative 4y plus 4 on the right. So we want to factor out that negative 4. Okay, so we're pulling out the 4. what happens when you record on your phone. So we're, we factor out the negative 4 because now we can kind of see where our h and k values are. We're going to do one more step too. We're going to pull out that 4 because remember we have to pull out the 4 in order for it to be in that correct format. We have x plus 3 squared, so that's the left side, equals 4 times negative 1. There's our p and then y minus 1. So our h and k vertex is going to be negative 3, positive 1. Our focus will be negative 3. So since this is symmetric with respect to x, our axis of symmetry is going to be the line x equals negative 3. So our focus, the y value would change. We would have 1 plus a negative 1 equals, this is a misprint, that should be 0. Okay. Um, then our directrix is the line y equals 1 minus a minus 1, which gives us 2. Now, I do want to say sometimes it's easier to just graph it. You can see here's where your vertex is. I'm sorry, this is your focus. And I like to actually draw the vertex first. So if I had drawn the vertex first, then I could just see p values negative 1, drop down 1, draw my focus, drop up or climb up 1, and I have my directrix. So that's, to me, easier than sometimes this can get a little confusing. So make sure you always check it against your graph. Don't just graph it based on what you mathematically found. I would suggest graph your vertex and then add and subtract your focus distance or your p-value distance and see if it matches the focus you found mathematically. Or just write it down from the graph. And one more, this one's with respect to y. So we're going to complete the square for y now. Divide 2 by 2, and we get 1, and then 1 squared is 1. So we add 1 to each side, and then we have a perfect square on the left. And then we have 8x plus 32. So factor out an 8, so now we have x plus 4. So our h value is negative 4, our y value is positive 1. One more step, remember, pull out that 4, and now our p value is 2. So this kind of graphs it backwards, sorry. Um, this gives us all our values. You see vertex, focus, directrix, etc., etc., and we graph our parabola.
So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. I, I tried to do the PowerPoint. I had it all recorded. It was playing fine on my computer. And then when I posted it, it again was not sharing it. I'm not sure why. I can't get it to work. But for the time being, I'm going to record these through YouTube. And then you have the link and you can access it. So I hope you guys have a great day. And um, I'm going to do a separate one for 10.2. So thanks for joining me.